YB environmental students. Today we're going to be talking about the limits to growth human population. So we've talked about carrying capacity and we've talked about different human resource use. So now we're going to bring that all together here at the end of our topic three and brainstorm and review. Okay, let's get started. So earlier in our unit, we were actually learning about carrying capacity. We were learning about different types of growth curves. We have our J growth curve, which is exponential. We have our S curve, which is logistic. We know the human population looks a little bit more like the J curve. All right, but things get a little complicated when we calculate it. So um, let's review carrying capacity in general. We're going to refer to carrying capacity, this max out leveling here, as K. And it is the maximum number of individuals of a given species that a particular environment can support sustainably. This means over the long term without infecting the environment. If you're not sure what sustainable means, you need to go back to 3.2 and revisit that definition because it has a very, very specific definition. Let's go over an example. So let's say the carrying capacity of a rangeland where cattle are is the maximum number of cattle or animals that that rangeland, picture like a field of cows, um, the plants, the limiting resource can sustain over an indefinite period without deterioration. So this means this, the carrying capacity is the amount of creatures that whatever limiting resource can sustain without deteriorating or depleting over time. Now I'll start picturing this for humans. There's a lot of resources that are limiting for us that we have that are common goods, and we've been learning about them. Things like soil, food, water, energy. We're worried about all of those things as limiting resources, and we're worried if we're using them sustainably. But this might make us wonder, how, what is the maximum number of humans that the planet can hold? What is our carrying capacity, right? We're over 7 billion now. Well, where are we going to go? Are we going to 10 billion? Or like, what, what's the limit? And that's going to be related to this limiting resources. But it's not a really easy question to answer. So it's very complex. So when we calculate human carrying capacity and scientists have this discussion, we, we know it's not easy because we have so many types of resources. Again, we've already learned about a ton of them and there's different types of energy, soil, water, food, right? And humans are pretty ingenious or innovative or creative at dealing with when some of these resources start to limit. We create technologies or change our lifestyles. But right now we know that requirements depend on lifestyle. And depending on if everybody becomes an MEDC versus an LEDC, we're going to use more resources because those lifestyles might have us eat more meat if we're an MEDC or using more technology or energy if we're an MEDC. And as we transition in a society for our demographics to shift, there's going to be a change in carrying capacity over time, and it changes a lot. It changes depending on if there's wars or famine or disease. And really, again, our ingenuity or our creativity leads to technologies, which might change the types of resources available or how we're using them. So keep going with that. Um, there's even more stuff. It is hard because we're a global society. It's tough to know, are these resources in one place? They are moving about. So tracking how we import or export, it's not like the carrying capacity of the United States is simple to calculate because we don't get all of our resources. We don't grow a lot of bananas here or chocolate. We import that, and some of our stuff gets exported to other places. This enables us to grow beyond what we normally would be limited by with our normal environmental conditions. It's wonderful going to the grocery store and being able to get whatever you want almost any time of year, but that's really crazy. That's crazy technology, and it's something that makes this calculation of carrying capacity very, very difficult. But it is allowing us in our local populations to exceed carrying capacity, um, even though um, our global population is getting really big. So it, it makes this calculation super hard and it makes it so that we don't really realize we are growing probably beyond what we can sustainably use our resources. 
So moving forward, how do we measure it? We measure it going back to how we do ecological footprint, right? So we're going to determine it in kind of the same way. We're going to look at the rate of the energy and the material consumption. Again, that's our soil, our water, our food, energy resources we've been learning about. Um, how much pollution we're also making through these things. Think technology, think fossil fuels, think climate change. All of these things, if they're polluting, they're deteriorating our environment and that makes it less sustainable and makes our carrying capacity need to stabilize or lower. Um, and also how much we're interfering with our long-term life support systems. This is also think climate change. Are we starting to increase the temperature on the planet? Are we starting to make it so our bee population no longer exists and we don't have any pollinators to help us grow our crops? Are we no longer having enough oxygen making plants because we're cutting down the Amazon rainforest? All of these things are global life support systems that we need to make our food, to make our oxygen, to have clean water. And if we start destroying those things by pollution or consumption, that in those things destroying them, it, it's a way we can calculate carrying capacity as well. However, we don't want to be all doom and gloom. We can think through recycling and reuse to try to impact this drain of the resource. And this could be a way we can think technology can increase our carrying capacity, which can allow our population to continue to grow a little bit. So now we're going to move on to talking about some ways we can still use resources, but use them smartly. So, um, we usually think recycling is the bomb.com, but actually it's not the best way of making sure we manage our resource and energy use. The best way is to reuse something. So actually recycling your water bottle is kind of poopy. Don't even get the water bottle in the first place. Why don't you use a reusable water bottle that you can use indefinitely, okay? Recycling is not that awesome. Buying used clothes as long as you're not worried about bed bugs or whatnot. All of these things are much better than recycling or buying for the first time. There's plenty of other ideas and as we move into our trash unit in the future you'll brainstorm some of them. Recycling is the next best thing but reuse was definitely the best. These things are not all created equal. Recycling actually takes energy. Some of these things recycle better than others. Metals and glass recycle the best, then paper. Plastic is almost worthless to recycle. Um, it takes so much energy and you don't get a lot of good stuff out of it, and it's really non-efficient. So metals and glass usually are the best. <laughs> Remanufacturing is how we can take an object and reuse it in a kind of clever way. It's very similar to recycling and reusing. Um, here we have a soda bottle and it's being made into a soap dispenser. Um, sometimes because this takes energy to kind of change how it is transformed into a different product, um, that means it might use some fossil fuels, but it's better than starting off from scratch with and all new things. Last but not least, just reduce your use in general. That's called absolute reduction. This means stop using as much stuff. This would be grand, right? But it's really hard to picture. Just use less energy. Just turn off the lights. Instead of using better light bulbs, turn them off. Or use less paper. That's a really hard one. We know we're students and teachers. That might not be super feasible here unless we get lots of awesome computers. Um, less metal. Just use less. Um, um, so I think this is really tough, but as we move into our pollution unit, we're going to start brainstorming ways to have some of these types of solutions because otherwise we're going to have a big problem with our carrying capacity and how we're depleting resources in our environment. But for now, it's up to us to kind of brainstorm some of these solutions the way that they work best for us. All right, great job, guys.